Greetings, everyone. Well, I guess we're not done with them yet. What's better than one Tiger Source amp is two. Tiger Sources? Sorai? Something like that. Well, a valid question was put forth. If these are going to be used in a stereo system, you know, one's been modified and the other has not, is it going to affect the sound quality any? So yeah, that's a fair question and something I will address in the video. Well, the quick answer is, if an amplifier has low distortion, flat frequency response, high damping factor, there's really nothing in the signal that's changing other than it being amplified of course and there's some other things we want to look at did the modification make one amp noisier than the other and what about the stability of the factory amp the one that's still in its factory configuration I can also perform a null test where you take both amplifiers, feed it the exact same signal, and put the loads on, and then compare the outputs at this point. This is the bridged point, so you can connect a scope or a speaker and adjust the level so both amps have the exact same level coming out. And ideally, you should get a null here the signals will cancel out. In real life, it'll never completely reach that. But, yeah, I think this is a good test because it'll show if the amps are similar enough to each other. So let's get started. First of all, the noise from the factory amp, which is the one on the bottom. I call it the factory amp because it looks like it was factory made the way the wiring and components are. That or the builder did a real good job. But anyhow, it's turned on. And uh, listen for the noise. The camera probably won't pick anything up. I'm picking it up a very, very light buzz. I mean, I have to put my ear right on the speaker to hear it. I'm not really hearing any hiss, though. So pretty quiet amps. Okay, now I'm on the top one, the modded one, in other words. And it's pretty much the same. Just a very faint buzz. You know, what's really I can hear most of all is the power transformer. I mean, even sitting back, you can hear the power transformer. It's not crazy loud or anything. You won't hear it playing music, but it's a lot noisier than anything that comes out of the speaker. So both the amps are quiet. I should mention in the noise test, I have both of the input level controls turned all the way down, so it's not picking anything up from the outside. But anyhow, now I put the 0.1 microfarad film cap on square wave we're on the modified amp and you know we did this already but there's a bit of a ring but no instability now the square wave is kind of slow because it has its input and output filters in place you don't want to really want to take these apart and unsolder them for this so yeah, it's stable, it's not oscillating. Okay, so now I move to the factory amp. I did put a bulb limiter on it because if it does oscillate, I don't want to blow it up. This test is pretty stressful, especially if the amp oscillates, it could burn up the outputs. So let me find the control here. Uh-oh, <laughs> it oscillates. Now with a capacitive load, just like the other amp, you just want to see a few cycles of ring and it goes away, but this is, you know, not so good. Now let's stretch that out. 
Yeah, that's an oscillation. It's especially on the top side. Excessive ring that damps out on the bottom side, but yeah, it's oscillating. Without the cap, it's fine. No oscillation. Okay, the null test here. So I have both amps connected to a load. And across each amp's positive terminal, I have the speaker. I have the splitter cable here going to each input. So I'll play some music and I'll see if I can adjust the level control and null the amp out. So first we'll listen to it with one of the controls already turned down so you get the full signal and then we'll try to null it. Okay, so there it's full signal. all it out. It's hard to do. It's very touchy at the null point. I need like a fine tuning control for that. Okay, I got it tuned as low as I can get it. You can hear just a faint signal coming through. That's a pretty good null. The good thing is I don't hear any distortion, so you know if one amp had more distortion, it would show through the signal and you'd hear it. But I just hear I just hear the music. I don't know how the camera picks that up, but Okay. So yeah, the similarities in the signal compared to the differences, you know, could you hear that tiny difference in the sound? And I say, no way, because the similarities in the signal would overwhelm it. And in, in the real world, you're never going to make a perfect null. You, know, you could fiddle around getting the input and filter caps just right. I mean, the... Uh, low pass filter on the input and the coupling capacitor value on the input you can fiddle around with those maybe some of the feedback components and try to get a perfect null but yeah you'll never get it perfect and this is a pretty good null anyway it's like I say it's low enough I don't think you'd ever be able to hear the difference between the amps they'll work just fine together so what about distortion measurement? Well, I can only go down to 0.2 or 0.1% on the scope here. And for some reason, no matter what I test, even this thing, which has very low distortion, below 0.005, that's what my computer measured it at. And that was the limit of my computer anyway. But it's now measuring on this thing like a third of a percent of second harmonic everything i measure gives that so i don't know what's going on with this it used to work better but you know at least with the null test i'm not hearing a crunchy distortion sound so i know the amps are working well together that way so either one's not producing excessive distortion well, I feel confident enough to say that these amps will work fine together in a stereo configuration. The only concerning thing is the uh, stability with the factory unit. You know, that's an issue with these amps, their marginal stability, and yep, that shows up in the capacitor test. But in normal use, you're not going to have a capacitance across it, so as long as you keep the speaker wire short and not force any unusual loads on it, I think you'll be fine. And I guess I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.